What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Kevin's Coast to Coast Gambling Show. Nick is out this week. Uh, we had a midweek Thanksgiving special with Nick and the two Kevins. I'll go ahead and link it so you guys can check out how they kind of picked the Thanksgiving slate of games. They did discuss the Ravens and Steelers game that has been shifted from it was it was supposed to be the primetime game Thanksgiving. It got shifted to Sunday and then it got shifted again till Tuesday. So as of this recording on Saturday, it should be happening Tuesday, I believe is the latest. It's been a crazy day in the NFL. We've got Matt Patricia fired by the Lions, also sacked the GM. We've got Santa Clarita County in California basically banning all contact sports, saying the 49ers can't play. I think Stanford is up there too. I'm trying to remember my California. I live in California, but my Cal, my Northern California geography isn't that great. So I think Stanford's up and around there somewhere. Uh, and then, you know, just the absolute insanity of uh, the cherry on top of a weird wild day is that the, the Broncos are not going to have a single quarterback available uh, tomorrow when they play the Saints. So Driscoll, the other guy, Drew Locke, none of them are out. They've talked about having like a frigging quality control coach that played in college at UCF as, a, as an option or something who's not even a professional football player. They talked about having him in. They talked about having the third string running back play. They've talked about having a wide receiver, Kendall Hilt, Hinton, Hinton, Hilton, Hinton, Kendall Hinton. He's on, he's a, he's a, he's a practice squad, he's a wide receiver on the practice squad, but he might play quarterback because he played at Wake Forest. Like that makes you uh, an acceptable option. So it's going to be an absolute shit show tomorrow. Uh, my lock uh, spoiler alert, I'm just going to jump right into it, but my lock already ahead of this was, you know, I've done work on this for the past few days or whatever, but my lock at uh, Saints minus six, it's looking pretty good now. I haven't seen if the line is going to move. You know, uh, the news is relatively recent, but I can't imagine that line isn't uh, going to move a little bit. Um, so if you can get them at six, go ahead and take that. I just wanted to briefly look at last week. My lock last week was Miami minus three. I got hosed by Tua getting benched. Uh, I picked the Raiders plus eight in prime time and then the Bucks. So the Bucks screwed me. Uh, but I did have, I went eight and 13 against the spread last week. I had the Titans plus five and a half, the Panthers plus two, Browns minus three, Steelers minus 10 and a half, Saints minus four, the football team minus one and a half, the Jets plus nine and a half. And the Raiders plus eight. And I think that Skins game was not the Thanksgiving game. It was actually the Lions game. All right. So with that, let's go ahead and just jump into these games quickly. I'm going to run through the whole schedule. All right. Let's take a look at the one o'clock games. We've got the Las Vegas Raiders favored by three at the Atlanta Falcons. Carr and the Raiders look pretty good against the Chiefs. Uh, Atlanta's D didn't look great against Taysom Hill. Their pass D is ranked 30th. Uh, Matt Ryan was pretty down last week against the Saints. No touchdowns and two picks. Um, I like the Raiders minus three. Next up, we've got the Chargers flying across country to play the Buffalo Bills. The Bills are, are favored by five. I don't like the Chargers flying east to play in 44-degree weather in Buffalo. I think that's going to be a problem. Herbert, he looked good against the Jets. He threw for 366 yards, three touchdowns. It is the Jets again. Uh, Stefan Diggs is having a pretty big monster year. Uh, I think the matchup in this game is going to be the Buffalo pass rush to see how they get to Herbert. He got sacked three times uh, against the Jets. That being said, I'm going to go Bills minus five. Next up, we've got the Giants heading to Cincinnati to play the Bengals. Ryan Finley takes over for the uh, much injured Joe Burrow. The strength of the Giants D seems to be that they get to the quarterback with pressures, rushes, hits. The Giants also have five takeaways on the season, which is a very comfortable stat looking at Ryan Finley. Daniel Jones is oddly enough like the leading rusher for the Giants. So Giant, two bad teams, but I'm going to go ahead and take the Giants uh, minus six and a half. Next up, we've got the rematch of the Titans at Indianapolis. The Colts are favored by three. Rivers threw for over 300 Colts yards against the Col 10. Uh, Derrick Henry is back to looking like the King Henry again. You know, he's leading the league right now. He's, he's over almost 1,100 yards. He's got nine touchdowns. Uh, he ran for over 100 yards against the Colts in Week 10. Tannehill struggled against the Colts' uh, defense last time. I think he's going to struggle again. I'm going to go ahead and take the Colts minus three. Next up, we've got the Browns heading to Jacksonville. Browns are favored by six. 
Baker has not thrown a touchdown or a pick in three straight games. Kind of a weird stat line. Mike Glennon is actually going to get the start from uh, Luan, Lucon, Luke, Luke, Luan. I can't even remember his name. Uh, Jags give up a ton of sacks. Browns just wreaked havoc on the Eagles. So I expect that to be a major matchup problem. Uh, Miles Garrett didn't even play in that game, and they still got to the quarterback quite a bit. So James another good matchup is going to be uh, James Robinson, the running back, uh, going up against the Browns front seven. I still like the Browns minus six. Next up, we've got the Panthers heading to Minnesota with the Vikings. The Vikings are favored by three and a half. Uh, the Vikings look bad when they lost to Dallas, but Kirk, had a Kirk still game. had a great game. Three touchdowns, over 300 yards passing. Uh, the Vikings are really struggling against the pass. Teddy should be back. It's kind of the weird Teddy returns back to the Minnesota where he was injured and, tra- and drafted and all that stuff. But uh, I, I don't think it's going to be enough. I'm still going to take the Vikings minus three and a half. Next up, we've got the Cardinals heading to New England. Cardinals are favored by one and a half. It's pretty close. This is basically a pick them to me. Uh, the Cardinals flying to the East Coast. It's 51 degrees is the forecast. I don't know, man. What, dude, the West Coast team's flying east. To play in the northeast of all places, I never feel great about. Uh, Murray was a little bit dinged up. He injured his sh- shoulder against Seattle. New England had a lot of trouble with Deshaun Watson. So the escapability of Murray has me worried a little bit. You know what I mean? So it's just enough to uh, kind of have me going to Cardinals. So I'll take the cards minus one and a half. Next up, we've got the Dolphins heading to New York to play the Jets. Darnold is back somehow. He's going to start. So it's just if, uh, you know, uh, to further torture him, I guess. I don't know what the point of, you know, yanking Flacco at this point is, you know, whatever, man. Uh, you know, Dolphins are going to get back on track, I assume. The last game in week six was 24 nothing. I don't think a ton has changed since then on either end. So I'm going to go ahead and take the Dolphins minus seven. And then next up, we've got the aforementioned insane New Orleans Saints heading to the Denver Broncos. I mean, you know, what needs to be said here? Taysom Hill, he threw for over 230 yards against Atlanta. Atlanta didn't throw for any touchdowns, but he ran for two. Um, you know, Denver will be a step up. They've got a pretty solid pass D. Denver's defense uh, sacked Tua six times last week. So, you know, losing your quarterbacks, I mean, they're going to be on the field a lot. They're going to be on the field all damn game. So I don't think they're going to be at that as productive, especially when you got an option like Alvin Kamara to dump off to. Uh, it's going to be tough to run on the Saints. Tomorrow for the Broncos, man, you know, the Rush D is ranked second, and they could be in a weird Wildcat offense all day with God knows what at quarterback. So I am comfortably taking the Saints minus six. Next up, we've got the 49ers at the Los Angeles Rams. I've been burned, I think, every week picking against the Rams because I watched them just be destroyed and dismantled here in my local Southern California broadcast watching them play that Dolphins game. That Dolphins game is seared into my mind. And for whatever reason, like I can't, I can't forgive the Rams for how bad they looked in that game. So I've been reticent to pick against them, but they burn me every time. I pick against them in prime time every time, and they burn you me. Know, the Rams somehow lost, you know, to the 49ers in Week Six before they, while they still had an NFL football team. The Rams' pass D is ranked second. The rush D is ranked fifth. Uh, the 49ers are going to get a few people back. They're going to get uh, Debo Sam, Debo, Debo. Debo Samuel back, Raheem Mostert is back this week. The 49ers they have a good secondary. Uh, they gave Goff some problems in Week Six, but I think I think the Rams have somehow figured it out. So I'm going to take the Rams. They'll probably lose now. Next up, we've got the Kansas City Chiefs at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Chiefs are favored by three and a half. I expect Brady to be better, but he's playing a, like a Kansas City pass D that's ranked like fourth in the league. The Chiefs D can be exploited. The Raiders put up a t- you know a ton of points and numbers especially on the run. Uh, the Chiefs' run D was better against the Raiders, but hasn't been good all season. Uh, Tampa Bay has the number one rushing defense in the league. I'm going to lean I'm gonna lean Chiefs. Next up for Sunday Night Football, we've got the Chicago Bears at the Green Bay Packers. Packers are favored by nine. It's a bit of a number. The Bears' passing D is actually ranked uh, top five. You know, they're number one red zone D. They're number one holding on third down. The Bears' offense is historically bad. I think for for how good the Bears' defense is, I think the Bears' offense is ranked like their, their counterpart. I think they're the worst on third down. They might be the worst in the red zone. Uh, Mitch Trubisky is going to play. Nick Foles is out with his hip injury. Uh, I'm going to regret it probably, but I'm actually going to take the Bears with the points. I just don't. I don't think it'll be that huge. I, I don't know. Could be bad, but I something tells me Bears plus nine. 
So I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and stick with that. All right, for the Monday night game, we've got the Seahawks heading to Philly. I think my my matchup is how many sacks can Carlos Dunlop get? He might get two or he might get three. You know, he's been a monster since moving over from Cincinnati. It's just getting out of Cincinnati, the a career revival and everyone needs basically. I think I mentioned it earlier, but uh, you know, Miles Garrett was out with the Browns and when they sacked Wentz five times, so if you can imagine. You know, and Seattle's past defense horrible uh, but Wentz you know I just I don't I don't even know what to say about him anymore uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take the Seahawks minus five all right and with that let's go ahead and take a look at the locks for the week mine as I mentioned I'm gonna go Saints minus six I mean I think I'd be comfortable taking like Saints minus 10 Saints minus 11 it's gonna be bad tomorrow uh Kevin Quinn is gonna go Pats plus two and a half he likes the cold weather uh Kevin Hatch is gonna go with a uh tease if you will He's going to go Eagles and Packers. So there you go. But thank you guys so much for listening. We appreciate it. Check us out on the disorderly.com. We've got all kinds of wild, weird entertainment stuff, sports stuff, you name it. So check us out. Subscribe, like, share. We appreciate it. Thanks so much. Bye.